first spring practice. Uh, excited about getting out on the field with the guys tomorrow and uh, getting back to work. There's a lot of things that um, we need to work on, and um, I think our guys are really excited to do it. I know they are. So why don't I just open it up for questions and get you guys the information you need. we take our first question from Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Um, Jay had, had, had a uh, question regarding uh, your most recent uh, uh, COVID uh, shutdown, but uh, real quick, um, has the spring game been moved? Um, I haven't seen any announcements yet. Can you just uh, talk about your plans uh, for spring practice? Sure. Uh, we're going to start tomorrow, uh, as you know, and tentatively uh, the spring game is scheduled for Thursday, May 20th. Now we'll see, you know, as long as there's no further stoppages. Um, that's what that's what we're planning on. Greg, right. regarding the stoppage, uh, what's the, been the uh, uh, last two weeks like? Uh, what have you been able to accomplish? And then I guess going forward, now that the school has um, uh, is requiring students to, to have a vaccination if you're enrolled for the 2021 semester, uh, the fall semester, uh, is there a plan in place to get uh, the players vaccinated going, fo going forward? Well, you know, I think, again, our medical people were phenomenal. Um, you know, you got hit a little bit, and uh, when that happens, you need to do what's uh, the responsible thing. And I think our, our doctors and our trainers were, were awesome. We, uh, we navigated through it as well as you can. And, um, push spring practice back for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's really, really important, and we already missed it our first year. We couldn't afford to have several players missing uh, for spring practice. And number two, our players really didn't, you know, there, there were some guys who came to me that were desperate. You know, coach, I need to be able to compete. So that was encouraging to me that the competition levels are rising and guys understand that, uh, you know, this is a very important time in their careers. So um, I'm excited about that. Uh, I wish, you know, you never do you want to push spring football back past final exams, but uh, that's, that's just where we find ourselves. And, you know, since, you know, since this whole thing started, one thing that we've learned is you just have to be ready to pivot and uh, don't spend too much time worrying about the situation. Spend all your time figuring out what's the best way that you can thrive in that situation. And that's, that's what I feel we're doing right now. We're going to take our next question from Bobby Darren, 24-7. Greg, I wanted to ask about the quarterbacks. How is Noah's ankle from, I know, was lingering into the offseason? And what are your expectations out of that position uh, through spring practice? Well, Noah is feeling better. He's not 100% yet. Uh, it was a pretty serious deal. But um, I think the quarterback room is, is in a good place. Uh, there's a, they got a good chemistry in there. Coach Gleason is, like I am, very excited about watching um, – you know, Evan and Cole and Johnny and Austin and all those guys develop. And certainly uh, with Noah now being in the system for a year, uh, going out and having a chance to, to work through things again, we've, you know, we begin we continue to grow the offense. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I think, I think we have a, a good situation there and we, we need to really make sure that's one of our points of emphasis, right, is how do we maximize our quarterback play and part of that is through spring football. Chris Eisman with Gannett. Hey, Greg, I just want to ask about the uh, mid-year mid enrollees. I mean, how important are these next few weeks for those guys? And, and Kavana, what do you want to see from them to, to know that they're, you know, getting everything they need to out of this? I think it's really important. And not only the mid-year enrollees, but last year's freshmen, you know. They didn't get a spring. If they were mid-year enrollees, they didn't get a training camp. You know, what, what we got was a couple weeks in, in the fall, and then we went and played a season. And as you know, the, the season is all about Saturdays. you got to get ready for that Saturday. That's what I love about spring football. There is no game at the end of the week. So you don't have to work on game plan preparation. You don't have, you're don't you strictly working on playing the game of football, our offense versus our defense. And to me, that's where you can make some real growth for your younger players. And we have a lot of young players. You know, I, I like the mix of our team right now is – we have some guys with the super senior type deal that occurred because of the NCAA's waiver. Uh, we have some older guys, and then we have a 
huge group of young players. But what, what comes with that is they don't have a lot of experience. And this spring is a chance for them to get live reps running our offense and running our defense. And uh, I think it's huge, huge for those incomers, but uh, huge for last year's as well. Going to go to James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I'm just curious, what do you think about your safety depth? You've got a lot of guys at cornerback. Do you maybe think about moving one of them over to safety? And we've never seen Peyton Powell in a Rutgers uniform. What can he bring to the table, you think, uh, this spring practice and going to the fall? Well, the safety question is an interesting one. Um, we may make some moves. I have to see, you know, let it play out a little bit. But spring is also a time to experiment, right? So you can slide some guys over and see if they have a natural inclination to play defense. Peyton Powell's playing defensive back. Uh, we'll see. He's not totally healthy right now, so we'll see if um, if he is able to go. Then uh, it's a great opportunity for him uh, in the secondary. And um, I think our secondary is going to be kind of a work in progress. We have some experience. Um, I think Christian Isian is a guy that um, we're going to lean on heavily this spring. I don't know how much real contact work he'll do, uh, but he'll get he'll get practice time for sure. Trey Avery is a guy that I think really played at a high level last year, and um, we look for him. We're going to need him to be uh, a consistent performer at a high level for us to play well. Then there's some newcomers that certainly we want to get a look at. So um, I think I think we have a chance to be good in the secondary, but I think we're green. Here we go, Richie Schneider with Marvels. Hey, Greg. So you mentioned um, experimenting a little bit in spring with position switches. Uh, two noticeable ones, uh, Troy Rainey and Kamar Missouri over to the offensive line. Can you talk about uh, what went into that move? Well, we just think that's their best position uh, for our football program as well as for their future. So uh, we made that move. Um, Kamar uh, has been there. Uh, a little longer. Actually, Troy had worked some there and then moved back. He's been kind of a, a back and forth guy. Troy, they're both really good prospects. We just need to lock them in at a, a position and let them grow. And that's what we're going to do with the offensive line. But uh, very, very natural benders, guys that are athletic and uh, have big frames. Steve Politi, NJ.com. Hey, Greg, can you give us some insights on the Arts decision to enter the portal? Were you surprised at the timing and, and maybe give us a sense of why he went in and, and will you add any other players to that position uh, to replace him? Yeah, Steve. Um, you know, I had, I had several conversations with Art and uh, very, I'm very close with Art and he just felt like he needed a different opportunity. And, you know, we talked through it. And I, you know, I just hope that he finds what he's looking for because he's a great young man. And um, although we'll miss him, as I said earlier, I'm excited about our quarterback room and, and where we are. So um, just kind of looking forward to it now. Can I go to no, no, no more additions there just to make that you're, you're comfortable with the players you have. You won't add anybody in the portal? Uh, no, I, no, we're not going to add anybody in the portal right now. You know, we have um, – Gavin Rupp is coming in as a walk-on freshman um, in in the summer, but that will be the only addition to the room. You Sorry about that. One. Slipped and said a wrong name. I got you. We're going to go to Bruce Beck, NBC4. Hey, Greg, you find out a lot about kids during adversity. So when you go through another pause like this, do you like your group? Do you respect your group? Are you proud to lead this group? I do like our team a lot, Bruce. Um, as I've told you before, they're very, very hardworking, which is kind of a prerequisite to play under this staff, um, you know, because this staff's a hardworking group. That's really been from the day we got here. I think uh, we took over a group that knew how to work for sure. Um, I think now what we're into is – learning how to work smarter, learning how to figure out, okay, we've done some of this. Again, this is still a new, this is our last new thing together, right? Spring practice. But I think it's a really important last new thing in that uh, we have to get better. 
We have an opportunity in front of us, but we have to get better. And I don't mean a little bit. We have to get – there's a lot of work to be done. And that's the best thing about spring practice is you can go and sink your teeth into it, and there's no game on Saturday. So, you know, I encourage these guys, find out how good you are. You know, don't be so worried about, you know, can I do this? Go try. And if you can't, well, then you know that's kind of your limit right now. But go reach. Go try to be a little bit better. And uh, we need to do that as a, as a program. We have to get better, and we have to get better fast. So uh, this spring, um, that's one of the main reasons as well that we, we pushed it back um, as far as we did because we need to have everybody able to go. That, that's one thing we needed to have. We need to have a group that's uh, to able to go out there and get better. We'll take a couple more questions. Anthony Fusilli, Rutgers Radio Network. Greg, how you doing? Doing well, Fooch. Careful driving now. That's not uh, that's not always the best thing to drive and <laughs> FaceTime at the same time, Fooch. That could be dangerous. Oh, Fooch. What I wanted to ask was, obviously, what Bruce brought up about, you know, the challenges and adversity and, and just how you've been able to overcome recruiting right now is crazy and you've seemed to figure out a way to be successful at it. Can you talk about that as far as your staff? Well, you know what? I think in all this stuff, uh, as I said earlier, we're trying to thrive, not just survive through this stuff. And, you know, just when you think you're through it, here comes another pause, right? So, again, unfortunately, we've kind of got experience at it now. And, okay, what can we really work on when we're not able to work with the players? And, uh, you know, and that's all we try to do is thrive in the environment that we're put in. And... Um, I think as far as recruiting goes, I think the staff understands that recruiting is a, is a 365 day task and it doesn't matter if it's 23s, 24s, 22s, you're constantly recruiting every class. And I, and it gets a little confusing. It gets confusing for me because as the head coach, I kind of have every position in every area and I really have to sit and think, okay, now is this, what, what class is this? You know, that's not the way it used to be. Years ago, you recruited a class, then you put that class to bed, you start on the next class. As you know, Fooch, now it's you're recruiting ninth graders, right, and actively recruiting them. And now with uh, June opening up to to certain, uh, you know, evaluation situations, it's, it's going to be even more hectic. So life of a college football coach, I've often said uh, coaching in college is really a lifestyle. It's, it's, it's not a job. Going to go to Chris Nowalski with Rivals. Hey, Coach. Uh, from the end of last season, has there anybody that's really caught your eye? You know, in terms of uh, what they did in, in the weight room and the games they and the games they've made. You know, I think oh, without singling someone out, Chris, I think the group has made tremendous gains. And I don't think I know it. I mean, statistically, you can see it from new personal bests in the weight room, weight gain, lean muscle mass gain. Um, there's some guys that I'm excited to see run our defense and our offense that were on scout teams a year ago, right? We were, we were so quickly forced into game preparation last year um, that you don't really have the opportunity to see them run our offense and defense where they understand what they're doing. Now, not only did we lift and train, but we were able to meet with our players and review film and uh, you know, I think there's going to be guys now that come out there that understand our offense and defense. So I'm excited to see them play. Uh, you know, and there's several of them. I mean, we're, like I said, with the exception of some of our super seniors, we're such a young football team that um, I can't wait. I mean, I'm excited about it, but I also understand that, you know, we have to accelerate the progression. Otherwise, we'll run out of time. I'm going to take our last two questions. We're going to go to James Cratch, NJ.com. Hey, I'm just curious about Brendan Bordner. When a guy like him switches sides of the ball late, that late in his career, it usually never works out. What has he done to kind of to make it work out? To be, you know, he started a couple games last year, and he's able to compete for a job in the spring. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I totally agree with it. It never works out. I mean, we've had some situations where it has in the back half. But you got to remember now, he's still got some eligibility left. Brendan's got, actually, if he chooses to, two more years to play. So um, I'm thinking, you know, when we make the move, if he takes advantage of all those years, 
you know, it's like really in the old days, moving a kid's sophomore year. Does that make sense? So what has he done? He's physically a gifted guy. He was one of the strongest guys on our team when we took over. Um, so that was one thing. And the other, the other thing is sometimes when you move a guy from one position group where he's kind of middle of the pack athletically, you move him from D line to O line, all of a sudden he becomes one of the better athletes. And I think that would be the case, um, with Brendan. And I think, you know, like he and I just talked to, when was it last Friday, we were talking about how much more comfortable he is now. Like he never really felt like an old lineman, you know, he didn't get the spring to do it. He didn't get the summer to do it again. He was forced into action. And I don't even remember it kind of blurs together, but what do we have like four or five weeks before we opened the season? I mean, that's hardly enough time to get indoctrinated to playing a position you've never played. So I'm anxious to see him play this year, this spring, because I think he can make, I think our whole offensive line can make big strides. And, but again, I keep saying that, but we need to. Like, it's not like, oh, if we do, that'll be a bonus. We need to make strides in the offensive line. I think Brendan, along with a bunch of others, will. I'm going to go to Keith Sargent, NJ.com, for the final question. Like, I don't ever remember a time when you've had every one of your starters back, at least from last season. Um, and then the majority of your two is back as well um is this unprecedented for you and then i guess what would be your optimism for, for that this offense can really take another step forward well you know i am it is nice when you look at it and you say well these th these guys have played and we have some young guys that are going to push them from behind so there's competition yet there's some experience the flip side to that is we were a three and 16 so you know Unless we get markedly better, you know, that, that's, and that's my job and that's our staff's job. We have to get better. I hope that the experience we had together in our systems last year and then having an off season to not only go back and look retrospectively, but then to look forward. Okay, how can we help you be a better player in our scheme? Uh, and how can we change our scheme if we think you're that good and it's just not a perfect fit? How do we make it a better fit? Those, uh, those, those are the things that I'm excited about. But we, we definitely, and you know, I've said it all along, and, and that's what spring football is all about. We need to make critical, fundamental improvement, you know, which I'm not going to get into all the details of what we as coaches do. But, like, there's things that we did on the offensive line that were just not, not, not acceptable but poor, right? There were some things we did in the secondary that just weren't good. Same thing. Every position you say, can we get rid of those things and just make that a neutral it doesn't have to be a strength, but can we make it a neutral? And then the things we are good at, let's kick them to the, to the moon. Let's really do them really well. That's kind of what I'm trying to preach to our staff and to our players. Uh, we're not going to be great at everything, nor do, we, nor do we ever think we're going to. But what are we good at? Let's know what we are, and then let's, let's really try to get very good at it. Because we have, as you know, Keith, a very challenging schedule. Uh, and, you know, I, I tell the players, right now we're focused on – Practice number one of spring, but you never ever take it out of your out of your focus there in the back of your mind is what's coming, right? Is a is a huge twelve game schedule that's gonna be here in September and we gotta be ready for it. So each one of these steps, you know, we went through phase one, which was our off season program, longer than we thought. Phase two is spring practice. Right? Then they'll get a little break and then we'll enter phase three, which is our summer program. Phase four is our, you know, training camp. And then phase five is the one that we, we work so hard for, and that's the season. So we're looking forward to this, this part right now, phase two, and uh, we really need to get better at it. Guys, I appreciate you getting on, and uh, I guess we're going to get players for you, and then I'll be back in, a little, in about a week or so and try to give you some updates and uh, look forward to when we can be together again and you guys can actually come out to spring practice. But until then, um, we'll see you in a week. Take care.